Pablo Cruz at the number 13 spot this day in 1978. Love will find a way. And Nick Gilder, Hot Child in the City, at number 12 just before that. Now, that Nick Gilder song would eventually get to the number one spot. Number 14 and 15 in the next set. And the number 14 song is from a movie. And the number 15 song, the group is from uh, somewhere else other than North America. Want to learn more about how to navigate the stock markets or how to get the most out of your financial planning? Attend an upcoming investment planning workshop hosted by Richard Infantino of Primetime Money. Every workshop will include top portfolio managers, estate lawyers, and tax accountants who will help you maximize your returns and minimize your taxes. There is no cost to attend the seminars. All you have to do is call to register. Call now, 1-866-891-2637. Previously on Dave's Corner Garage, did someone get a haircut? <laughs> yes. You're looking good. Thank you. Th looking good. You are looking amazing. <laughs> 21 years as Canada's number one consumer automotive radio show means we reserve most of our admiration for listeners like you. Join us for the next Dave's Corner Garage, Saturday morning at 10 on Zoomer Radio and at davescornergarage.com. Presented by Triangle Tire. Oh, no. I can't be out of ink. Not now. Mega tank. Why do I do this to myself? Ah, oh, what's that printer that comes with 30 times the ink? Mega tank. Yes, it's a Canon. Mega phone? Mega tank. It's a Canon printer. It comes with like two grand worth of ink, prints me over 7,700 color pages. Mega tank. Mega what? Listen to the voice in your head and get a Canon Mega Tank printer so you don't have to think about ink for a long, long time. Visit canon.ca slash mega tank for details. You get your sick kid's lottery ticket, 10 grand prizes, cars, travel, cash, including $1 million. I did, but I'm playing for the kids. I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Who needs luck? The sick kid's lottery has the best odds of winning. Still, it's really for the kids. So why are you clearing out this spot in your garage, hmm? Well, because if I do win my dream car, I gotta keep it somewhere, right? With one and two odds of winning, play for the kids or play for the prizes. Just as long as you play. Get your ticket at sickkidslottery.ca. The early bird deadline is this Friday. RAF 1311002. Please play responsibly. AM 740, Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. Summer nights 
So I told her we'd still be friends. Then we made our true love now. Wonder what she is doing now. Summer dreams ripped at seams. But the The original greatest hits.
Little River Band at number 15 this day in 1978 and reminiscing. And John Travolta with Olivia right there. And the number 14 song, Summer Nights. This day in 78, that's where it was. Next set, I'm going to play you three, 16, 17, and 18. And there's another movie song right in the middle of that set. And more, too. I'm Kathy Buckworth with the show for today's grandparents. Saturday on Go To Grandma. We go to the great outdoors with Destination Ontario to discover activities and adventures to enjoy with our grandkids. Then we take ourselves indoors to discover the grand millennial style of decorating with interior designer Kimberly Selden. And why you might want a U.S. domiciled bank account instead of a Canadian U.S. dollar bank account on our Take 5 with RBC interview. An all-new Go-To Grandma, Saturday morning at 7.30 on Zoomer Radio. My name is Naomi Barber, and I'm Director of Optometry at Specsavers. An OCT scan helps an optometrist spot eye conditions early. It's one way that Specsavers is changing lives through better sight. Now, when we take a scan, an OCT scan, what this does is really separate out the very distinct layers of the retina and allow us to see even the earliest signs of changes. And this is what optometrists then use to identify, are you at risk of glaucoma? Are you at risk of macular degeneration. The difference is how Specsavers makes an OCT scan affordable to everyone. We've made the decision clinically to use this device for every patient so that we are detecting the earliest signs of eye disease well before conditions have progressed. So we include it as standard, included as part of any eye exam. Affordable eye care is long overdue. And so are you. Book an eye exam with OCT scan included at specsavers.ca. New this fall on Vision TV, Healing Gardens Season 2. Can nature be as powerful as medicine? Vision TV invites you on a VIP tour of five of the world's most beautiful gardens, where we hear the soulful stories of healing from the people who tend them. These stories take you beyond the splendor of the gardens and unearth the transformative powers of nature. Join us in search of happiness and well-being on Healing Gardens, Monday night at 9 on Vision TV. AM 740, Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, every sight and every sound. And I don't know if I'm being foolish Don't know if I'm being wise But it's something that I must believe in And it's there when I look in your eyes Love is in the air In the whisper of the tree Love is in the air In the thunder of the sea And I don't know if I'm just dreaming Don't know if I feel safe But it's something that I must believe in And it's there when you call out my name Love is in the air, in the rising of the sun. Love is in the air, when the day is nearly done. And I don't know if you're illusion, don't know if I see it true, but you're something that I must believe in, and you're there when I reach out for you. Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, every sight and every sound.
Greatest hits. Zoomer Radio. One of the most iconic movies of all time, and Frankie Valli singing the lead song from that movie, Grease. At number 17 this day in 1978, John Paul Young and his version of Love is in the Air at number 16. And Chris Rhea with a really nice song at number 18. Fool, if you think it's over.
number 18 song this day in 1978. Chris Rhea and Fool, if you think it's over. We're not done yet, no. We have three more, 19, 20, and 21, and a real rocker at number 21, and one at 19, well, a little bit of a rocker at number 19, but definitely going to rock you out at the number 21 spot. This day in 78, our next 11 at 11 continues right after this. You get your sick kid's lottery ticket, 10 grand prizes, cars, travel, cash, including $1 million. I did, but I'm playing for the kids. I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Who needs luck? The Sick Kids Lottery has the best odds of winning. Still, it's really for the kids. So why are you clearing out this spot in your garage, hmm? Well, because if I do win my dream car, I gotta keep it somewhere, right? With one and two odds of winning, play for the kids or play for the prizes. Just as long as you play. Get your ticket at sickkidslottery.ca. The early bird deadline is this Friday. RAF 1311002. Please play responsibly. Carp presents money you didn't know you had. Savings and discounts exclusively for Carp members. Ready to fulfill your travel dreams? With nearly 50 years of experience, Senior Discovery Tours knows how to make great travel experiences happen. Book any tour in 2023 and CARP members will receive $100 off per person on tours to over 100 destinations worldwide. Not yet a member? Sign up online and start saving in minutes. Go to carp.ca. Money you didn't know you had? Well, now you know. Hey honey, I'm on my way. See you soon. To listen again, press 1. Hey honey, I'm on my way. See you soon. To listen again, press Hey honey, I'm on my way. See you soon. To listen Hey honey, I'm on my way. See you soon. When you lose someone, the first thing you forget about them is their voice. With your help, we can prevent more lives from being silenced. Mad Canada. No alcohol, no drugs, no victims. Find out more at mad.ca. FM 96.7 in downtown Toronto. Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. He 
spent all night staring down at the lights of L.A. Wondering if we could ever go home. Bob Seger with the number 19 song on the next 11 at 11 from This Day in 78 and Hollywood Nights. And Walter Egan and Magnet and Steel, number 20.
The number 20 song on the charts this day in 1978, Walter Egan and Magnet and Steel. The number 21 song would also end up at the number one spot. And here's a hint. They've been around and part of the British invasion since the mid to early 1960s and have a new album out right now. But I'm going to play you the song that went to number one for them this day in 1978, but is currently on this day in music history at number 21. I think that's enough of a hint. Coming next. New this fall on Vision TV, the acclaimed British mystery series Shetland. I know that this is a shock for everybody. Whoever did this is extremely dangerous. Detective Jimmy Perez returns home to lead murder investigations that uncover secrets and lies within an island community that's as beautiful as it is deadly. Based on the best-selling books by Anne Cleves, Shetland. Catch it Tuesday nights at 9 on Vision TV. Ever think we might be looking at aging all wrong? What if, instead of being afraid of slowing down, we embraced what our bodies are still capable of? What if we saw a cane or walker as a call to keep moving, a ticket to independence? Imagine if we felt as excited about our first walker as we did our first car. At Evolution Walkers, we don't have to imagine. We see it every day. Freedom, mobility, peace of mind. Visit evolution.ca to find your walker today. Coming up this week on Finding Your Bliss, life coach and bliss expert Judy Liebrecht is joined by documentary filmmaker Sean Menard to talk about his much-anticipated film, 299 Queen Street West. Also on the program is one of the stars of Much Music, original VJ Erica M. Follow us at The Bliss Minute on Instagram and Facebook. Visit our online magazine, findingyourbliss.com, and join us this Saturday at 1 p.m. on Zoomer Radio. This goes out to all the safe drivers, to the drivers who live in harmony with cyclists, the ones who leave so much space between other cars, they never have to read a bumper sticker, and those who drive slower in fog, snow, rain, and construction, which happen to be Canada's four seasons. With CAA insurance, your history of safe driving could get you savings on car insurance because you've earned it. If you're a safe driver, visit carp.ca slash CAA to learn more. Auto insurance is underwritten by CAA Insurance Company. This is Zoomer Radio Toronto. CFZM FM and CFZM AM, owned and operated by MZ Media Incorporated. The number 21 song on today's next 11 at 11 from this day in 78 is The Stones and Miss You. And recently in an interview, which was a really cool extended interview with Keith Richards, the interviewer said to him, how long do you think you're going to do this, Keith? And Keith said, well, I've never even thought about quitting. I mean, what else would I do? And that is so true. Stones, number 21 this day in 1978, on its way to number one. Miss you. Miss you. On Zoomer Radio, the next 11 at 11 on a Monday morning.
dog. People think I'm crazy. Stuffing on my feet, shuffling to the street, asking people, what's the matter with you, boy? Stop and speak to friends passing by. Got no strength to wipe away the tears from my eye. I don't care what's going on. Only know she's gone and the sun don't shine anymore. And I don't feel fine anymore. Cause she ain't fine anymore. No, I don't feel fine anymore. I ain't got time anymore. Such sadness now in each place I go. Other people laughing, still I just wouldn't know. Never stop to see who's there. Once I used to care, but the sun don't shine anymore. Cause she ain't mine anymore. Up all my time just trying to be alone Used to take an interest in the state of the world Now I only know how much I'm missing that girl Hope the world will understand I can't lend a hand Got Google Home? Hi. Say, hey, Google, play Zoomer Radio. There's a celebration all across the nation. Thanks to every DJ and TV station. And we don't want to us and say, there goes the rebels of the town.
Good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Logan with your 12 o'clock Zoomer Radio News. A mix of sun and cloud for your Monday, chance of showers, a high of 24. Right now it's 22 degrees Celsius in Toronto, 72 Fahrenheit, feeling more like 27. In the news, Toronto Transit users, mark your calendars. The Federal Minister of Innovation says some cell service for all is coming to the TTC subway system as of October 3rd, regardless of your carrier. Making the announcement at City Hall today, François-Philippe Champagne said Rogers, currently the sole provider of cell service on the TTC, must immediately allow other telecom companies access to all of the technical information they need to provide service and hammer out commercial deals within 100 days. The federal minister also set deadlines mandating full subway station coverage by next June and 80% of tunnel coverage by the end of 2025. Total system coverage is required by the end of 2026. 
On Fight Back, right after the news, Liz West is filling in for Libby's Nimer today. In the first half of the show, it's the Zoomer Squad. Last Thursday, the province's ombudsman, Paul Dubé, issued a report indicating that Ontario's long-term care inspection system was totally overwhelmed during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the ministry overseeing care homes was caught unprepared and unable to ensure the safety of residents and staff in a time where hundreds died in a matter of weeks. Dubé's office has made 76 recommendations to the government, and Stan Cho, the province's newly appointed Minister of Long-Term Care, said in a statement that the Ontario government has accepted all of the Ombudsman's recommendations and made progress on over half. Liz and the squad unpack this alarming issue and more. Later in the show, Liz and guests discuss some interesting investigations as consumers continue to grapple with food inflation and marking the 22nd anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks. As always, we want you to be part of the conversation, so get in line now by calling one of ours, 416-360-0740, or toll-free 1-866-740-4740. In other news, Ontario's new Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing is suggesting the province may not move forward with a review of six regions with both upper and lower tier municipal governments. In a statement today, Paul Calandra said that he will be reviewing the move announced by his predecessor to appoint facilitators to assess regional governments in Durham, Halton, Waterloo, York, and Niagara regions and Simcoe County. Calandra says he wants to ensure the province's approach supports the goal of getting homes built quickly in those fast-growing areas. The government enacted a law in the spring to break up the upper-tier municipality of Peel region, which includes the municipalities of Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. The previous minister, Steve Clark, said last month that the facilitators in the six regions would be appointed by today, but the change in plans comes a week after Clark resigned amid the fallout of two scathing reports on Greenbelt land swaps. Zoomer Radio weather, a sun cloud mix for your Monday, chance of showers, a high of 24. Partly cloudy tonight, still a chance of showers and a low of 16. Tomorrow, yeah, clouds and showers, the risk of a storm, a high of 21. Right now it's 22 degrees Celsius in Toronto, 72 Fahrenheit, feeling more like 27. I'm Jeremy Logan. News next at 1 o'clock on Zoomer Radio. Now, fight back with Libby Snymer on Zoomer Radio with guest host Liz West. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us today. Libby is off. I'm filling in. So a happy Monday to you all. We have our Zoomer squad standing by to tackle the issues of the day. Last week, Ombudsman uh, Paul Dubé revealed that Ontario's long-term care inspection system fell apart during the first COVID wave. His report further revealed there were no inspections for seven weeks in the spring of 2020, leaving facilities unsupervised to manage the onset of COVID. Over the following two years, over 4,000 residents died in Ontario's long-term care homes, as well as 13 staff. Uh, The report makes 76 recommendations. And Stan Cho, the brand new Minister of Long-Term Care, said the province has accepted all of them and has made progress in over half. So is that good enough? And now, time for the Zoomer Squad. Right now, I'd like to welcome Daryl Bricker. He's CEO of Ipsos Public Affairs. Peter Muggeridge, uh, senior editor of Zoomer Magazine. And Anthony Quinn, chief community officer for CARP. Thank you for joining me and taking time out of your busy schedule. I know Mondays are can be a little frantic sometimes. I'm looking at you, Peter, because I know you're particularly <laughs> busy. A magazine, Ma- deadline magazine deadline, looming. but I'm, I'm happy to be here. Good, Great good, to be good. Here. Yeah. All right. We're going to make it worth your while, and we'd like to hear from you, our listeners. If you have a comment or a question, the number for you to call is one 740 4740 I'm going to start with you, Anthony representing uh, CARP and uh, being an advocate for uh, seniors. Um, What was your reaction to this report? Well, I'm I'm generally a fan of any ombudsman's office and the role they play in speaking on behalf of the general public to sometimes a a governance that won't listen to to uh, the, the general public, but but in this case, a, a three-year investigation that likely spent 
millions of taxpayer dollars only to tell us things we already knew from other reports, from news, news coverage, from reports from family members and, and residents in long-term care, that uh, it may be something that also sits on the shelf uh, with other reports, but I saw nothing in the executive summary that, that I read that was new to me. And I, I think, as Minister Cho said, a lot of it's already been acted upon over the last two years. This is a report that's three years in the making now. And we're looking like we're looking at uh, COVID coming back. And mm-hmm. and I don't think getting anything in this report is going to, to add to the protections for long-term care residents going forward. Peter? Yeah, and and what caught my eye was, um, you know, some of the language CARP used and and uh, Bill specifically used in in the days, um, you know, in in the early days of the pandemic when when the uh, home inspections were being cancelled. Bill Bill was saying all these things, like three three or four years ago. So it's it's it doesn't come as a surprise because CARP was all over it then. And uh, this is just sort of pr- proof to what they were saying before. So, so in that in that respect, it's good. You know, it, it sort of proves what you guys are saying, but it doesn't push the ball down, you know, the the road any further. Um, you know, uh, inspections are a problem. Um, you know, finding inspectors who are qualified, uh, getting the homes to sort of open up their, you know, their places when inspectors come and show them the true story. That that's that's a continuing problem. But but the idea that they missed inspections is not a problem. Well, I mean, not a during, not a surprise during a pandemic when there wasn't a good system of inspection in place to start with, right? And everyone was literally afraid of dying should they mm-hmm. show up at a concentrated place of of COVID, as we were seeing in long term care homes. But but the. The inspectors themselves, I don't think, are, are the problem. It's the enforcement. And without a, 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 a hammer to wield against the, the companies that are delivering long-term care, whether pu- public, publicly owned or privately owned, unless there is a, a means to enforce the inspections, then the, the problems continue. And I didn't see a way uh, or a response from the ombudsman on how how they could enforce the outcomes of the inspections. There's a small uh, financial penalty in place now, but no one's threatening to take away the keys. And I think that's really where we have to be at to protect long-term care. Like they do with restaurants. If a restaurant fails, it gets shut down. Exactly. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, you you can't close it down because there are residents there, but there has to be some real financial penalties to those who are running them. Make it it hurt. Okay, so let me jump in here, and Daryl, we're going to get to you as well. So one inspection uh, was found uh, when they inspected the Pinecrest Nursing Home in Bob Cajun, uh, that there was a lot of problems. Staff and residents were sitting together. They weren't wearing masks. Masks. Staff were not changing their gloves as they moved throughout the home. Uh, they were not putting uh, on or taking off their PPE properly. And uh, a recently hospitalized resident returned to the home, was put in a room with someone else, even though there were other rooms available. So all these mm-hmm. missteps. And in that situation, policy recommended that the ministry revoke the home's license. So the pol- the policy exists, but the inspectors instead gave the home three months to train staff and make sure those issues were fixed. I want to go to you, Daryl. What's your reaction to hearing that? Well, I, I think a lot of people were doing a lot of improvising at that time. I mean, you know, Ontario is not unique in Canada, frankly, not unique in the world in terms of uh, what all of the people who were dealing with this very vulnerable population were facing. Uh, So I, for one, um, I I like the idea that we actually have a report that catalogs all of this um, and uh, does have some specific recommendations on how things could could be improved. But, you know, obviously, I don't think that anybody... um, uh, covered themselves in glory through the through through this process, and what the report shows is that it was not just you know in specific cases it was a it was a systemic failure, um, and uh, you know we've we, we've obviously got to learn from that because right now it's the pandemic, but the truth is the demand on uh, on all of these uh, facilities is just going to absolutely grow at an astounding pace as the population ages. So um, the the vulnerable population is going to get even bigger. And unless we deal with uh, some of these situations in, 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 the, in the near term, it, it'll be even worse the next time. Peter, you had a comment? Yeah, Liz, um, your, your point about it taking three months to train, I mean, and, and that's sort of an indictment on 
on the, the the ability of the system to turn around and and you know implement measures on a timely basis. I mean, this was a pandemic. This was changing every day, you know, and 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 three months to change like like that's sort of. That's the sort of thing this report should have looked at. Why did it take three months to implement a training process for proper PPE wear? You know, and and that isn't really answered in this report or any report. Well, we all had know. to learn it overnight, yeah. as I recall. Yeah, but exactly. But in, in, infection prevention methods aren't new science. That that's something that that uh, healthcare workers should be trained in if they're not. But in a small community like Bob Cajun, there aren't hundreds of long-term care beds. There are likely dozens, and the ministry recommending closing it is it's not a practical solution either so we've we at carp for decades now have been advocating for greater investment in long-term care with greater oversight another report telling us that this is the path we should be going down but but we haven't we at carp had hoped that one of the very few positives coming out of covid would be a, a light properly shone on on long-term care and meeting the needs. And as demographers like Daryl and everyone working in the government knows, it's only going to continue to grow. And we're at the precipice of a a mass number of people who will need long-term care beds. They're building physical infrastructure, but they're not addressing the the care. Okay, so on that note, what would you say, let's look ahead? And, you know, what are the top three priorities at this this, uh, moment in time for long-term care facilities? Well, one, one of the biggest issues to address is the, the health care human resources. So employees who have some training in, in personal support workers who have training in dealing with uh, patients. Uh, the majority of people living in long-term care have some sort of dementia or mm-hmm. cognitive impairment. So we need uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands, of, of trained PSWs to, to care for our most vulnerable seniors. So that would be my number one priority. And... and um you know, as uh, piggybacking on Anthony's suggestion, deliver more care to the patients per day with with the extra staff because, um, you know, these reports all all sort of shone a light on how uh, how few hours each resident gets for for either personal support or nursing care. So, mm-hmm. with the added, um, you know, with with the added staff resources, um, certainly you know, devote more hours per day to, to patients and or residents. The province will yeah. say that they are working to hire more uh, workers and that they are Im- increasing the number of mandatory or average hours for residents of care. But uh, what CARP and particularly our chapter in Ottawa are, are really focusing on is changing the the model of care. Right now it's a task-based uh, care for long-term care residents where there are check boxes and there are computer screens and fed, cleaned, bathed, very mm-hmm. institutional, uh, inf- yeah. and mm-hmm. put to bed, yeah. woken up. And, and that isn't how people live. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are advocating for an emotion-based care. Um, and there's a model here in Toronto and the, the city of Toronto has promised to implement it in all their municipally run long-term care homes. But it's where you treat the patient as a as a, a person, and like a whole, as, as yes, so a whole they, person. They they are fed when they, they when they would like to eat. They sleep when they would like to sleep. They are cared for according to their needs, not just based on a task. All right, uh, I when I hear these things, I, I don't know if it's just me. I think a lot of this is common sense around you know how to manage germs and your PPE and, uh, you know, not putting a sick person, someone who's just come back from the hospital in the room with someone else. I mean, this is not, it's not rocket science. It doesn't seem to me. And it feels like the bar is really low when it comes to what we expect, which I think is a problem. I think we have to raise the bar. Um, Daryl, when you, what what would you like to see uh, be a priority for long-term care facilities? Well, I think uh, what uh, the other commenters have said is, 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 is right. I'm not an expert on long-term care, but it seems to me whenever a government comes out and says they've only done half of the recommendations, well, they've got another half to go. Um, so uh, exactly what kind of a system are we going to have in place as a result of implementing all of these recommendations, and what's the timeline? Uh, because as you know, your other guests have said, you know, this is not something that's just entirely COVID-dependent. There's going to be a, a level of demand that's coming our way that we're going to have to get ready for. And another priority that CARP has uh, for provincial governments across the country is to invest greater health care dollars into home care. 
So mm -hmm. currently in every long-term care home in Ontario, there are approximately 15 to 20 percent of the residents who could be cared for in their home, of their own residence, should there be uh, the, the home care options in place. But when they're not in place, then they are required to live in an institutional long-term care setting. So investing in home care is a uh, more financially uh, beneficial way to care for older adults in their own home, and it's also a way to prevent institutionalization, freeing up more beds and more PSWs. So investing in home care to, to stem the flow into long-term care, we still have to build thousands of more beds, but mm -hmm. if you care for people where they live, uh, prevent them from having to be institutionalized for a longer period of time, then uh, you save the system money. And people want to live at home. They would prefer not to live in long-term care. Absolutely. They don't have to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. if you're listening and this is resonating and there's something you want to add to this conversation, the number is one 740 4740 Okay, I want to move on right now to something Doug Ford said. Uh, Friday night, he was at Ford Fest. The event took place in Kitchener. Mostly his supporters were there. And uh, during his speech, he accused the Ontario School Board of indoctrinating students on the issues of gender, saying that teachers should be telling parents about their children's gender identity. And right now, it's currently the policy of the TDSB to never disclose a student's gender nonconformity or transgender status to the parents or caregivers. And that's regardless of age, and it's primarily due to safety, not knowing what the ramifications could be in the home. A spokesperson for the Premier's office told the Toronto Star that the government is not currently exploring any legislative changes. But I wonder, should we be worried that he even brought this up? Uh, starting with you, Peter, what, what do you think the, the point was for Doug Ford to even get into this? Well, I, I think um, you're seeing it in Saskatchewan, you're seeing it in New Brunswick. There, there's been a pushback from parents who feel... The system has taken away um, a lot of their um, authority over their children or their, you know, even, even sort of gotten in between their relationship with their children. And this is a pushback from parents, uh, from Doug Ford, speaking for parents who, who want to be, you know, this is a very um, massive change in a child's life. And the parents need to be there, I think. And, and, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing like a you know, push back that um, these things remain in, in the school and uh, between a child and a social worker and the parent is removed from the equation altogether. And, and uh, you know, it, it's been this way since 2011 and I, I think parents are pushing back and, and I think that's what Ford is speaking to. And this is providing the child doesn't want to share the information. It's just they need their consent to, to call mom and dad or whoever is right. at home. Anthony, what did you think when you heard this? Well, I, I read the Toronto Star article first, and then I went back and actually watched Ford's speech. And, and it was really focused more on ensuring that parents are really considered the primary uh, educators of their children. And, and then he took a, 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 a swing at school boards. I, I, I served a term as a school board trustee, and, and I think that was a little uh, unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, what, do you, people, what do you guys do anyway? People, right? people might said. say, what does a premier do? <laughs> but uh, the, the, the role of parents should be primary in, in, in everything to do with their children. I, I don't think any parent would want to hand off their responsibility to, to an unelected, uh, unappointed uh, either school board trustee or or teacher or, or student counselor, anything like that. Parents should be the primary uh, uh, caregiver for their children. There there are instances where not every parent is it's a fantastic parent, but I know I, know I wouldn't want to, uh, to give over my, my uh, rights as a parent to, to anybody else. So I think that's what, what Ford was speaking to, and I think there's a, an appeal there, and the Toronto Star may have uh, been looking for a headline rather than <laughs> getting to the crux of the story. Right. Although this is, um, we're talking about a, a like a tiny sliver of population to which this would apply. I don't think it was about taking away the parents' rights so much as respecting the rights of the the student and giving them uh, the the job of deciding who gets to know what when. Right. And again, I don't think it would apply to a tremendous amount of people. I just thought it was odd that he decided to bring, you know, as a politician, you have to pick and choose what you talk about because every 
step is a bit of a minefield, especially when eventually you're going to need to be reelected. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Ford is already in the doghouse for many, with many people, including some of his supporters around this whole green belt fiasco. Uh, Daryl, what did you, in, how did you react in terms of uh, reading that he had sort of decided to venture down and have a conversation about something that wasn't required? Well, basically, it looks like Doug, Pol Doug, Doug Ford can read a poll. Um, you know, and the vast majority of Canadian parents agree with what Doug Ford is saying. So the the issue uh, is one that resonates, I think, with parents in general, but particularly with his uh, his constituency. So people who have maybe more traditional values and and uh, might look at the role of parenting in in a, in a way that maybe not necessarily well aligned with the more progressive school boards uh, that that are around the province. So uh, did it do him any damage? No. I don't think so. Um, in fact, probably it was something that, uh, because it's been springing up so much in the news uh, these days, that uh, that was a reassuring thing for people, particularly, as I said before, the, the, the parents who would be more likely to vote for him. Uh, so, uh, as I said before, I, I think it's Doug, Pol Doug Ford basically reading the polls and knowing what to do. Uh, we're talking about uh, long-term care facilities and the Ombudsman's report. We're also talking about Doug Ford and his coming out and talking about the education system and, and where the role of a teacher versus uh, the parents. If you want to get in on the conversation, please give us a call. The number, we don't bite, by the way. At least I can speak for myself. I don't. No, we do want to hear from you. The number is one 866 740 Whether you've had kids in school or you have kids in school now, uh, I'd love to hear your opinion. And um, Daryl, on that note, you said he, he's reading from a poll, but um, I wonder if he's trying to deflect, sort of change the narrative from what the the hyper focus that's been on his government for last like several several months. I feel like since uh, January, as a matter of fact, uh, just by throwing out this sort of uh, you know red herring, you're you're nodding, Peter. Yeah, I, I think you're dead on, Liz. Like it's it's he's changing the channel, right? And you know, he's got the star all, you know, that's their headline today. And they, they dropped the green belt story for today. So I think you're, de you're dead right. Yeah. Did yeah, you I, want don't think he's, I don't think he's making this up. I, I think he actually thinks that. And I think that people who vote for him actually are aligned with what that message is. And I actually think that uh, given particularly events at the Conservative Party conference this weekend and things that have been happening in other provinces, but also in the United States, uh, people were, uh, who were more likely to vote for him, probably looking for some sort of a signal. So yes, it has the convenient short-term impact of, uh, of uh, maybe changing the news cycle for a couple of days. But also I think it's probably something he sincerely believes. And it's also something that is aligned with the people who vote for him. So I don't think it's uh, is uh, super Official is just a you know a, you know a little thing that a distraction to throw to the media. I actually think this is aligned with with uh, what this particular version of the Progressive Conservative Party is. But how, how did it come up at the barbecue? <laughs> like, like Anthony, you were watching, were you? Like, oh, it's in the news. Like, it's but, in the news. But how, how, did, it, how did it come yeah, up, at, it the, come at, up? The, at the barbecue? Like, like the, I think he was asked the question. Oh, okay. Well, okay. It, it, it was part of his his remarks to the f very Ford friendly mm -hmm. audience at yeah. Ford Fest yeah. in in Kitchener, Ontario, and it. Was and we're going to ensure that parents have have the rights to uh, to to know when when something's going on with their kids in school and then around he, gender around, and then he went off off script to talk about the school boards and I don't know why uh, they get involved in uh, what was the word that was it the headline in. Uh, I, Sorry, you, you mentioned Liz. It, it okay. wasn't uh, indoctrinating the kids. Oh, indoctrinating, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was sort of a, an aside, but that became the headline. How many parents do we have here? Is everybody a parent? Uh, uh, Anthony, Peter, uh, Daryl, are you a parent? Oh, yeah, I'm a parent, okay. but my, uh, my child's too old to be uh, affected by this. But Well, okay, uh, but, so let's but, pretend we all uh, we forget how old our kids are. I've got kids. I didn't even know that this policy existed. My kids are part of the TDS. I had no idea this policy existed. I have never heard another parent talk about it. I have never known this to be an issue. I feel like this is a needle in a haystack. Like, what the heck are we t even, you know, unless there's a problem, what are we trying to fix? So I, that's well, why... For I conservative voters, this is, this is something. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the school boards really do have a strong point of view on this. And it's contrary to maybe what a lot of, uh, as I said before, voters who would be considering voting for the Conservative Party would think. So it's, it's one of those issues 
that, from a values point of view, actually makes sense for the premier to talk about from his perspective and from his uh, from how he builds a coalition in an election campaign. So I think that he was at Ford Ford Fest. He was speaking to a friendly audience, but that's mm-hmm. his coalition. And I, I think that they actually do believe that uh, uh, that the school boards have gone a bit too far on this, and it's becoming an issue. Um, at uh, a, a fair, in a fairly fundamental way in many school ju- uh, jurisdictions, not just in Canada, but in the United States and other places too. So this is one of those issues that's just kind of sprung up. And I agree, you know, needle in a haystack. I mean, you know, quite frankly, if you're calling, you know, a kid by a, a, a selected pronouns in, in school, I mean, it's not like their friends aren't telling parents and everybody else what's going on. It's not like people aren't going to find out. So it seems like a tempest in a teapot, but it's really more of a value signal. Yeah, I'd also say, let's, why don't we talk about why the kid doesn't want his parents to know, you know? But anyway, yeah. okay, uh, we've got John on the line, and John has something to add to this conversation. Hi, John. Hi. Um, with regards to the Toronto District School Board, that someone there spoke of a few minutes ago, um, it's not about what they want, because we the people are paying them. It's dictatorship when the, do- when the dog's tail is wagging the dog, but it's power and fire when we, the people, the majority of the body being the dog, wag our own tail. If we pay for it, we're supposed to tell tell these public servants what we want, not the other way around. And with regards to the gentleman next to you stating something along the lines of uh, Doug, Fraud, Doug Ford went off script, um, if he planned to speak about something, I think, if anything, he would already have a script, and he did plan to speak about it. And there's nothing wrong with speaking to the matter of parents' being uh, told you cannot be parents to your children with this takeover and this propaganda and indoctrination brainwash of our children. When I was in high school, which doesn't seem too long ago, we had some brainwashers telling us that if we look in the mirror for eight seconds or we look at someone of the same sex for eight seconds, then we are homosexual. And they had books uh, telling uh, something called Adam and Steve in the canoe, like, this is all brain. All right. So uh, just to uh, add to that, uh, it's human rights groups and health experts and educators who say that prioritizing parent involvement on this issue can come at the cost of safety for the child. I also clicked on those links so that they're they're not... Uh, voices of parents that they, they, they are advo- advocates and, yeah. and activists that the star is quoting. So yeah, so they're I, I'm the still people that pushing are, yeah. for the parents' rights above all. <laughs> all right, yeah, we have uh, Sita on the line who wants to talk to us about long-term care. Hi, Sita. Thanks for holding. Thanks for taking my call, Liz. Um, I and we are all getting older. We all would want to sure live am. and mm-hmm. die at home, mm-hmm. but who knows what's in the future. These are people, our loved ones. Criminals criminals are being treated better than our seniors. So government have to carry through with charges, and they have to stick with it. They cannot give up on that. For these homes, they have to meet the standard of care living for for our seniors, so seniors can live their last years and die with their dignity. All right. That's a wonderful way to wrap up the segment. Thank you so much, Sita. Thank you. For Take calling care. in. Yeah. Sometimes it seems like we care more about our restaurants, which you brought up earlier, yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, than we do about our long-term care facilities. I just want to say that the care workers themselves, I don't think, should be held to any, any blame. If you're going to go up the ladder to the, the boardrooms, perhaps, but the, the workers that are providing the care every day, they're the ones that are doing uh, what perhaps we should be doing for our own loved ones who are, are in long-term care homes. So... Uh, let's not leave it on the on the workers themselves. Okay, that's a great point. Does anybody else have a quick last comment well, before we say know, goodbye? One, one starting point with long-term care is maybe we can have a long-term care minister who stays in office longer than one or two years. We've had four since 2021. And so may, hopefully... That's inter- oh, that's a very interesting uh, statistic. Yeah, hopefully Stan Cho will be the one who, you know, spearheads change. Yeah. Uh, well, since everybody's always trying to get reelected, it's always a little iffy on right. what they're willing to do, uh, you know, in case it rubs some people the wrong way, like make some tough decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I hope you're right. I want to thank our fabulous Monday panel, <laughs> uh, Daryl Bricker, uh, who's on the line, uh, Peter Muggeridge and Anthony Quinn sitting across from me. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking the time uh, and talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Up next, uh, food prices, they can be a huge problem for many people. When you are looking for affordable staples like bread, you just grab them. But for one province, a new investigation shows that residents are being forced to pay more dough for their slices. If you want to join the conversation, the number to call is 1-866-740-4740. We'll be right back after this break. Join us for Legends in Concert, a tribute show featuring celebrity lookalike performers live. The Avalon Theater at Falls View Casino. January 10th to 17th, witness amazing tributes to Celine Dion, Tina Turner, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, Pat Benatar, and Bruno Mars. Don't miss this truly legendary experience. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. Legends in Concert, January 10th to 17th. The Avalon Theater at Falls View Casino. Magic trick number 56. Want double the amount of light in your home? A better view of the outdoors? Two words. Bug screens. No, seriously. While bug screens stop bugs getting into your house, they also stop 50% of the light getting in. That's why all screens on Windows from Magic are retractable. Not to mention patented and exclusive. Find out more at magicwindow.ca. It's not really magic. It's just better, smarter thinking. The world is big, and so is Air Canada's worldwide sale. With savings on over 180 destinations and up to 10,000 bonus airplane points to earn, it's so big that every destination deserves a sales event for itself. Like the Grand Canyon blowout, the Niagara falling prices, the Playa del Savings, the colossal Coliseum clearance, and that's just to name a few. Get big savings and big bonus points with Air Canada, but only until September 12, 2023. Book at aircanada.com or contact your travel agent. Caregiving looks different to each and every person. If you're caring for a loved one who's experiencing bladder leakage, explore solutions to help them stay protected. Depend bladder leakage underwear for men and women are designed for all-day protection. So, you can get back to enjoying each moment together. Sign up today for your free trial kit of Depend products like Fresh Protection, Silhouette, or Real Fit at Depend.ca. Delivered discreetly right to your door. Depend. The only thing stronger than us is you. Fight back with Libby Snymer on Zoomer Radio with guest host Liz West. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, Dollarama sells more than just cheap greeting cards and Halloween decorations. It also sells food. And more people have turned to buying their groceries at Dollarama and other dollar stores because of the low prices, including saving money on a loaf of bread. And we know uh, how expensive a loaf of bread can be now. However, if you live in Nova Scotia, you might be out of luck getting that cheap dough. Uh, An investigation by the Halifax Examiner has found a pattern of mostly breadless shelves in stores that shared a property that also included a Sobeys. So to understand this story, we're joined by Ellen Roseman. She's a consumer advocate and journalist. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Liz. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Okay, so... You heard this story, I'm sure. Uh, what, what did you think when you... Were you surprised that this had happened? Yes and no. Um, I, I do go to Dollarama, and we've got quite a lot of them in the city. And some of them are quite small, and some of them are really large. So I often thought the question of bread, which isn't uh, in every store, was really just a question of how much space they had to, mm-hmm. to display it. And uh, I, I never thought about these restrictive leases, but I knew that I knew they have them, especially in shopping malls, because the landlord of the shopping mall is often dictated to by the clients in terms of they'll put their store in there as long as there aren't too many competitors in the same place. Uh, so, um, and, and there's also a Dollarama um, at uh, Young and St. Clair. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sorry, what am I uh, talking about? That's uh, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm not talking about Dollarama, but at Young and St. Clair, uh, there's a little mall and there is a Loblaw store and a Starbucks store right across from each other. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, when they opened that Loblaw store, the Starbucks was already there, they were selling uh, takeout coffee, but they're not selling that anymore. And I think that's probably one of those restrictive leases where Starbucks says if you put another coffee, uh, uh, you know, uh, coffee uh, individual drink outlet across from us, we're going to move out of here. 
Right. But still, it's not fair for the uh, clients because they uh, aren't understanding it. And uh, in the case of bread, uh, as you were saying, bread has been uh, going up in price, uh, partly because of inflation, partly because of competitive things going on that the Competition Bureau has been working on for a number of years uh, involving price fixing among major chains. And people who are trying to save money on food are probably eating a lot more sandwiches, and they deserve to be able to buy bread at lower prices at a uh, nearby uh, discount store instead of having to go to the supermarkets. And the only way that they can get a good discount there is if they buy it where it's on the best before date. Uh, so uh, I, I feel that it's unfair that uh, big supermarkets are extending their power by forcing uh, a nearby dollar store to limit its supply to things that they uh, don't compete with the big store on. Yes, uh, I want to bring in someone else on the conversation. We are joined now by Dr. Jennifer Quaid. She's an associate professor and vice dean research in the civil law section at the University of Ottawa's Faculty of Law. Uh, Thanks for joining us, Dr. Quaid. Thanks for uh, having me on. Is this uh, is this something that happens often where there's a restriction for one food rate retailer who's uh, nearby another food retailer? Well, it's hard to generalize sort of across uh, across all products and uh, and all types of stores. I think that the that Ellen has identified you know one of the explanations for why restrictions might uh, might exist in contractual arrangements. And you can sort of see that there is a, a commercial justification at one level that does make sense. You don't want, you know, in one commercial property like a shopping center to have, you know, basically the same product being offered by by multiple merchants where it's just sort of defeating the purpose of having of having a, a different variety of, of, um, of products. And you could see that Maybe you know there there might be some explanations for why you wouldn't want to just allow that to happen without the the other merchants sort of having something to say about it. So I can see why those restrictive agreements exist in some cases. I do find it, however, a little bit um, odd the way the uh, the way this investigation that's been done in Nova Scotia sort of reveals that there's this unevenness, this pattern um, that's very much tied tied to the proximity of a grocery store, and then it's tied to a specific product. Mm-hmm. And I and I think that that you know I, it's hard without knowing all the facts, um, and that's something every lawyer will tell you. Uh, it's hard without knowing exactly what the facts are and what the what the contractual restrictions might be to know whether this might raise some flags. But it it does at least merit some further questions. Yeah, and one uh, shopper uh, quoted in the ar- article was quite upset um, because, as she rightly pointed out, bread, like, you know, milk and eggs and certain items would be considered a staple. So why is there such a huge markup? Why isn't it regulated like milk? And I think that's a really good question. I mean, especially since the, the whole bread uh, price-fixing scandal uh, that Loblaw suffered, uh, you know, not that long ago. It's like, what is the big, what, what is up with bread? Uh, Ellen, what do you think about the idea of regulating bread? Should it be regulated? Well, milk is not regulated except by farmers. You know, in Canada, we have uh, uh, supply uh, boards and uh, the dairy farmers make sure that they don't produce too much milk in order to keep the price higher. And that's often a big irritant when Canada tries to create trade deals with other countries because they see it as propping up the farmers. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, regulation that says milk has to be sold at a certain price. And it is competition like anything else that determines the price of milk. And occasionally some stores use it as a big loss leader and sell Mm -hmm. it at low prices. And they probably do that with bread as well. With Dollarama, it's a different model. You know, first of all, they only stock one brand and they don't have a lot of competition among the brands there. And they don't usually have any weekly specials. Their price is their price and they just continue with the prices that they have. Um, So I don't know if they should um, necessarily regulate the price of bread, but... um, They should uh, make it clear, like, I think that the customer deserves some information about, uh, you know, why 
the product sold in some stores and not others. And uh, maybe Dollarama should make that clear. But in my experience, Dollarama is not really good at communicating with people. Uh, I got involved with this back when I was at the Star in 2018. And somebody wrote to me about buying uh, drop cloths because he was doing a painting project. Mm -hmm. And he bought eight of them at a Dollarama store, $4 a piece. And when he got home, his wife said, no, no, that's the wrong kind. And he went right back to the store. So 20 minutes later, he's back in the store. And they said, sorry, we have a policy of no return or exchanges, you're stuck. And, uh, you know, we, they do have that policy, but it's not often that clear. It was never on their website until recently, and now they've put on something, but it's very uh, terse. It just says, well, you know, our policy is no return and no exchange, and uh, the law allows us to do that. So I guess they're saying that's how we keep our prices low. But in my view, there should be uh, a return policy for they can have no returns for things where you've changed your mind or you bought the wrong one or you know it, it's just not suitable but if the product doesn't work say you bought the bread and it's so close to the expiry date that it's molding up and you take it back to the store they might tell you sorry no exchanges no refunds and that's difficult and that's really not a, a great way to operate and i notice now five years later when i was on their site they do have a little bit more information but not a whole lot of it so, uh, you know, it's clear to most people that if you are shopping at a store that's trying to keep everything below $5, they're going to have to skimp a bit on some of the frills that you might find at other yeah. stores. Yeah. But they should be a little clearer about, say, that, that refund policy. They put it on your sales receipt, but that by that time you've already bought it. And they also put it on signs in the store, but I find the signage is hard to find and not that easy. And sometimes they'll put it on the screen while you're checking out. But again, you're not looking at messages on the screen. You're just looking to check out. So uh, we've got to be clear that Dollarama is maybe going to be more difficult to shop at if you have a problem. Yeah, um, I found out the hard way that you can't return anything. You know, that's just, and I assume too, it's it's how they keep their prices low. If you want to get in on this conversation, uh, something that's happened to you, or you've gone looking for a particular food item and haven't found it or anything, give us a call. The number is one eight six six seven forty four seven forty. I think a lot more people are turning to alternative uh, ways to get their groceries to sort of uh, save some money where they can. Um, certainly, it's, it's a shame when you have to drive to four different stores to get the cheapest price for individual items, because it seems like sometimes you might end up, you know, spending the same amount of money and time and gas in the long run. Um, but that's what we do. You know, we don't want to be, we don't want to be gouged. I feel like bread is one thing that really doesn't go on sale. I do buy my milk at a cheap price and I know where to get it, but I feel like my bread doesn't change in the, the major retailers. We have Rosie on the line who has something she wants to add uh, on this subject. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Liz and guests. I just want to say that at the Dollarama, it's always been that policy, but I recently bought a can of Lysol, and it's four bucks. It's not a dollar. And when I got home, it didn't spray. So I went back and said to a reasonable manager, and she let me exchange it. So I think if you're polite and you try hard to put on a good face about it and be gracious that there's a chance... Okay, good piece of advice, Rosie. I would do also, the same. I'd give it a shot. Yeah, also, Liz, I just want to say, like, check the flyers, because bread is, does go on sale. Oh, maybe I'm not doing the... I'm, I'm not a flyer checker. I'm being completely honest. Uh, okay. But then when I need my bread, I need my bread. Um, okay, we've got Bob on the line who wants to add uh, something to pharmaceutical prices. What did you want to add? Bob. Uh, hi there. Hi. Um, just, uh, hi. Uh, I bought some eye drops this morning. Can I mention the name of the drugstore? Uh, well, does, does it matter? Can you tell us uh, the story anyway? Yeah, no, it's probably the same at all of them. Okay. So I bought eye drops at a drugstore this morning. They were $16.30. However, the dispensing fee was $8.50, like half price. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Okay, and is this something you've ever thought of buying at a, one of the dollar stores? 
Well, this particular product, it was by prescription. Okay. So you don't have much much no. choice. Okay. But still, I mean, I'm I'm lucky that mine's paid for. But for all the se- seniors out there on fixed income, I mean, that's that you know, fifty percent of the cost is just the dispensing fee. I mean, that's not fair. No, it's, it's certainly not fair. Thanks very much for calling in with that story. We're going to go to Vic now, who's got some inside bread in information. Hello. Vic, you were in the bread business? Well, I was many years back, but again, to talk about it, to let people understand, uh, when they talk about a loaf of sliced bread, mm-hmm. you have to first of all see the weight of it. The second thing is, <clears throat> what what quality is it? Now, I was in a store yesterday. It's it's called the Circle K stores. They got about a thousand of them around between Canada and the United States and whatever. But anyway, make their story. They were selling. Yesterday, a lady came in. I happened to be just sitting near the or standing near the book aisle. She put the two loaves of bread down, and the man rung up ten dollars. She says, "What?" Yeah. Anyway, he said. The store man said, I sold those two loaves of bread last year, two for $5. One year, they went up $5, the two loaves of bread. Now, the thing is, they're, they're a quality loaf of bread. They're called Wander Bread, and which is owned by Westons. But other thing, Circle K stores, they overpriced and so much stuff in that store and I see people going in there on a Sunday morning they forgot to get it at a store or something and they're paying such crazy prices double and three times all right. Yeah. Well, sometimes we pay extra for convenience, right? That's why they're convenience stores. I really appreciate your story, uh, Vic. So uh, before we let you go, our guests go, uh, Ellen and Dr. Quaid, um, a separate investigation found that stores like Dollarama, they're selling items that can be found much cheaper, as much as 30 to 75 percent cheaper than the major retailers. Do you have any insight on how they're able to do this? I always personally double check labels and think, there's an eye missing from the logo or something like this cannot be the same product. But but more often uh, on social media, people are now posting uh, sort of gotcha moments on pricing or or the size of the item, because I think quite often stores sell something that looks really similar, but it's smaller. Dr. Quaid? Well, I, I, it's interesting you, you mentioned that because uh, recently, um, um, I think it was Ethan Liu in the Globe and Mail wrote an article about his experience um, with a particular type of sports drink that he really liked. And, um, and it had suddenly, um, the uh, manufacturer's instructions had suddenly changed, you know, and all of a sudden you needed more of the powder than before. Uh, but the packaging looked the same and all the information was the same. And, and I think... You know, there wasn't. It was hard to put your finger on what was, you know, you know whether this was really misrepresenting. But I think that experience that you're talking about, where you're sort of curious, you're doing it in the other direction, saying, "Well, it's cheaper." You know, what's different? But also, you know, sometimes when things are, um, I, I seem to be the same, but somehow, you know, the price, uh, the package size gets smaller, and so on. These are all kind of subtle ways that can be used to, um, to sort of. In some ways, a lot of this is just basic human psychology. People are used to the shape of a product. They're used to the packaging or whatever, and they just pull it off and put it, and they don't even think about it. And sometimes there are price increases or, I guess, price decreases that could be in- integrated into those into those products just because people are kind of on autopilot when they're buying things. And that's one of the... That's one of the reasons why, and I, I would think Ellen would agree that, you know, that's why um, providing enough information and being very clear and transparent about what is being sold and, you know, what is what is new or what is different is really important. And it's not always done systematically enough. So that makes it really hard for the consumer to know what they're buying. Yeah, I mean, Ellen, we, we really have to be sharp sometimes when we pick something up off a shelf to to not rush to assume it's better because of the price. Uh, there's, I feel like there are some tricks being, uh, you know, the retailers have some tricks up their sleeves on how to save themselves some money right now. Right. Uh, a lot of Dollarama's products come from Asia, uh, China in particular, and uh, they may not be of the quality that you expect. And things like um, 
magnifying glasses and sunglasses. There's quite a lot of that in Dollarama, and they're all five dollars or less, and uh, they look very nice. They they're stylish and all that, but you kind of wonder, you know, what's the quality? And does it measure up to the more expensive glasses that you might buy in a drugstore? And uh, the thing that worries me is that Dollarama is a place where people like to go, especially if they're really hard up and they can't really afford other places. And I'm thinking that in certain parts of Toronto, the big supermarkets are pulling out, you know, that they don't see it as a profitable place to be, given that the income level in the neighborhood isn't so great. So Dollarama would move in and then they would start replacing some of the uh, items uh that uh, people buy in a supermarket. Uh, One of the things that they don't do that a lot of supermarkets now do is give you discounts if you buy two or three at a time. And again, I think that's prejudicial against people with low income or seniors who might be singles. They might not want three, and they're paying a lot to buy just one. And I'm hoping Dollarama never gets into that uh, policy because it just seems unfair. Um, And they, they also, because they only stock one brand of anything, it's easier to get in and out. It's easier to shop. You don't have to stand there trying to figure out, you know, which is the cheaper one and which is the better one, and uh, it makes it easy. But in general, I find the best things at Dollarama are the kitchen appliances, you know, like the the stirring sticks and the coffee filters, and they have branded things like Betty Crocker. So yeah. if you go to a hardware store, uh, you're going to pay two or three times as much just because right. they tend to have higher um, uh yeah. Markups. Yeah. Uh, so they're really good on some things. They're definitely good on party supplies and okay. Halloween. We're gonna. And, they've got. A, they've yeah. got a plug. They've got such a good plug today. We're not gonna plug them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Ellen Roseman, Dr. Jennifer Quaid. I really appreciate your time contributing to this topic. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Liz. All nice right. to talk to you. It's been 22 years since the attacks on the World Trade Center that changed our lives forever. We talked to a former White House communications strategist about what it means today. We'll be right back after this short break. Now that Presto has added tap with debit and credit to their list of ways to pay for transit, you may be wondering, what else can you tap? Does it tap? Can I tap with my ukulele? Ukuleles, no. Debit? Yes. Will singing help? No. Oh. Introducing paying for transit with debit and credit. Not introducing paying for transit with song. Learn more at contactless.prestocard.ca. Now even more ways to pay for transit. Oh no, I can't be out of ink. Not now. Mega tank. Why do I do this to myself? Ah, oh, what's that printer that comes with 30 times the ink? Mega tank. Yes, it's a Canon. Mega phone? Mega tank. It's a Canon printer. It comes with like two grand worth of ink, prints me over 7,700 color pages. Mega tank. Mega what? Listen to the voice in your head and get a Canon Mega Tank printer so you don't have to think about ink for a long, long time. Visit canon.ca slash mega tank for details. It looks like Muskoka, but it sounds and tastes like Memphis. Deerhurst Resort hosts Elvis and Company, a live entertainment experience. Immerse yourself in the musical influences of Elvis Presley and his impact on popular culture with blues legend Harrison Kennedy, music historian and storyteller Memphis Jones, and Memphis menus created by the chefs at Ontario's premier resort. Elvis and Company, October 27th to 29th. Weekend passes and single tickets now available at elvisandco.ca. My name is Naomi Barber, and I'm Director of Optometry at Specsavers. Over 40, it's time to consider seeing your optometrist as often as you see your doctor. For people who are starting to notice vision changes, but also even those who are not, it's really important to have that regular touch point with your optometrist to ensure that the entire eye health has been checked and that you're understanding any risk factors as you get older. Major eye conditions are prevalent. They become more prevalent as we age. And Naomi says there's a connection between the cost of glasses and skipping an eye exam, which is why Specsavers offers complete glasses starting at $69. This opens the doors to people who perhaps have never had an eye exam or have put it off for a long time to think about including a regular eye check as part of your routine and feeling educated and empowered. Affordable eye care is long overdue. Do and so are you. Book an eye exam at specsavers.ca. Fight back with Libby Snymer on Zoomer Radio with guest host Liz West. 
Today is 9-11, that's September 11th, and while it has been 22 years, it's impossible to forget that day when four planes hijacked by al-Qaeda attacked the U.S., including the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, killing nearly 3,000 innocent victims and injuring many, many more. And only Friday of last week, it was reported that the remains of two people who died in the 9-11 attack in the World Trade Center have been identified, the latest positive ID in the 22-year effort to return victims to their families. Many more have still not been accounted for, meaning there's no closure at all for their loved ones. To talk more about the anniversary of this horrific event, we're joined by Larry Haas. He's a former White House communications strategist and award-winning journalist and senior fellow for U.S. foreign policy at the American Foreign Policy Council. He's also a columnist and author and public affairs consultant. Uh, Thanks for joining us, Larry. Nice to be here, Liz. So tell me, how are you feeling on this day, this anniversary of September 11th? Well, uh, the United States, I think, has settled in to the rea- the ongoing reality of a terrorist threat. I don't think that people on a day like today, 22 years later, this is front of mind consciousness. It's really more of like, oh yes, that's right. Yes, it was, it was 22 years ago. How about that? Uh, but we've gotten very used to all the additional security measures, whether it's at airports or going into sporting arenas or concerts or this and that. But where I think it has made the most impact to this very moment is really in the bowels of government. Uh, You know, uh, there are ongoing threats on a daily basis, uh, plots being hatched by al-Qaeda, ISIS-related terrorist groups, other terrorist groups. And I get reports every day on trials in different states, in convictions, uh, different countries around the world, plots being uh, both hatched and foiled. And I think it is a great tribute to our intelligence services and our law enforcement services that the main prediction uh, that one heard around uh, September 11, 2001, which is this is going to be the first of a wave of attacks, did not take place. And I think it's a real tribute to uh, our intelligence services and the ones we cooperate with, Canada, and the ones in Europe and our allies in Asia, that for the most part, we have been able to control terrorism since that awful day. You're in the Washington area. Are there events planned for today? How is this day recognized? Liz, for some reason, I am having a terrible time hearing you all of a sudden. So could you repeat that yeah, again? Yeah, nope, absolutely. Uh, how is today being recognized in the Washington area? I know New York, you know, New York has the Twin Towers and the, the monument. But so what, what's happening where you are? Well, very little, uh, frankly. And I think largely because... Uh, Vice President Harris has gone to commemorate this event in New York, and the president himself is on his way back from Asia. He will be making a speech uh, today, if he hasn't already, in Alaska at a military base, and he'll be talking to troops as he comes back. If he were in Washington, I suspect he'd be doing something here But this is really to my point. Um, We think about 9-11 the way we think about Pearl Harbor and the way we think about where we were when President Kennedy was assassinated. That is, it has been absorbed into the national consciousness, and we do, you know, a light bulb bulb goes off Mm -hmm. when we hear that it's Mm 9-11 on any particular year, But it's not like Veterans Day or the 4th of July or Memorial Day. It has not been elevated in that sense, and I don't think it ever will be. All right. Thank you so much. That's Larry Haas. I appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate your time, Larry. Have a great day.
Nice to be here. Thanks, boys. That is it for this edition of Fight Back. Thanks to producer Zeev Hattie for a great show. Libby will be back. Uh, up next, Eva Dees, ready to get the music uh, going with great tunes on the number ones at one. And it's time now for the news. Fight Back with Libby Snymer is produced by Zeev Hattie with technical production by Dan Christakos. Check out the Fight Back podcast anytime at zoomerradio.ca or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Zoomer Radio Toronto. CFZM FM and CFZM AM, owned and operated by MZ Media Incorporated. Good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Logan with your 1 o'clock Zoomer Radio News. A mix of sun and cloud for your Monday, chance of showers, a high of 24. Right now, it's 23 degrees Celsius in Toronto, 73 Fahrenheit, feeling more like 28. In the news. With tolling bells, personal tributes, and tears, Americans looked back on September 11th today at anniversary observances that stretched from ground zero to small towns across the country. People gathered at memorials, firehouses, city halls, and campuses to observe the 22nd anniversary of the deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil. Gabrielle Gabrielli, who lost her godfather Richard on 9-11, says it doesn't feel like 22 years have passed. It feels like a blur to me. It feels like yesterday, and it feels like a lifetime ago, and it's just so heartbreaking all these years later. It feels like it just happened. At Ground Zero, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris joined other dignitaries at the ceremony on the national September 11th Memorial Plaza in Lower Manhattan. The event doesn't feature remarks from political figures, but instead gives the podium to victims' relatives for an hours-long reading of the names of the dead. In other news, back home, Rogers must grant all wireless carriers access to its cellular network in core parts of Toronto's downtown subway by October 3rd. Industry Minister François-Philippe Champagne says the deadline is part of new Spectrum license conditions designed to bring cell phone and data services to the entire subway network by the end of 2026. Currently, only Rogers and Freedom Mobile customers have access to the network. What I'm here today to tell you that those days are over. Time is up. And that's why we're going to be acting decisively to change that for millions of TTC riders. The minister is giving mobile carriers, including rivals Bell and Talus, until December 20th this year to reach commercial agreements with Rogers about financial terms. The government says that if carriers fail to meet the conditions, it could take measures, including fines or license suspension. In August, Rogers unexpectedly launched its 5G wireless service for its own customers in downtown subway stations and tunnels, despite ongoing discussions with the government drawing frustration from Bell and TELUS. Well, the province of Ontario may not move forward with a review of six areas for regional governments. Municipal Affairs and Housing Minister Paul Calandra released a statement saying he's going to review the move announced by his predecessor to appoint facilitators to assess regional governments in six regions. The government enacted a law in the spring to break up the upper-tier municipality of Peel Region, which includes the municipalities of Mississauga, Brampton, and Caledon. Calandra says he wants to ensure the province's approach supports the goal of getting homes built quickly in Durham, Halton, Waterloo, York, and Niagara regions, as well as Simcoe County. Well, he was a Canadian fashion executive whose retail empire has crumbled amid a series of sex assault charges spanning decades. The first trial of Peter Nygaard begins today in Toronto. The 82-year-old faces eight counts of sexual assault and three counts of forcible confinement in Toronto, allegedly involving eight people at various times between 1987 and 2005. The Toronto trial is the first of four jurisdictions where Nygaard is slated to face charges. The Finnish-born entrepreneur who founded the Nygaard Group in Winnipeg in the late 60s and later became one of Canada's wealthiest designers is the subject of similar charges in Quebec, Manitoba, and the United States where he faces extradition. None of the charges have been tested in court and Nygaard has denied the allegations. 
Now to business news and a big court date for a big tech company. Our financial analyst, Kim Parlee, vice president at TD Wealth, says the U.S. Justice Department will be looking at the deal Google has made to make it the dominant search engine by default. If you think of an example, um, you know, when you buy a, an Apple iPhone, um, you know, Google has a deal with Apple that allows that the search engine or Google search engine to be the default. And so those kinds of things, as we know how people tend to do things, is we just kind of stay with what we're given and that's it. And the argument is from the Department of Justice is it's illegally shutting out a number of different competitors. Looking at the market numbers, the TSX up 133 points to 20,207. The Dow on the rise, 83 points to 34,659. NASDAQ up as well, 86 points to 13,847. While the Canadian dollar was up fractionally to 73.7 cents U.S. And oil up just 004 Five to eighty-seven fifty-six a barrel. Zoomer radio weather: a sun cloud mix for your Monday. Chance of showers: a high of twenty-four. Partly cloudy tonight. Still chance of showers on a low of sixteen. Tomorrow, yeah, clouds and showers. The risk of a storm: a high of twenty-one. Right now, it's twenty-three degrees Celsius in Toronto. Seventy-three Fahrenheit. Feeling more like twenty-eight. I'm Jeremy Logan. News next at two o'clock on Zoomer Radio. Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. Number one's at one. Original greatest hits. She's faced the hardest times you could imagine, and many times her eyes fought back. 
the tears And when her youthful world was about to fall in Each time her slender shoulders bore the weight of all her fears and a sorrow no one hears still rings in midnight silence in her ears. Let her cry. She's a child Let the rain fall down upon her She's a free and gentle flower Growing wild And if by chance I should hold her Let me hold her for the time But if allowed just one possession I would pick her I would pick from, from the garden To be, be mine, mine. For she'll awaken And sleep's the only freedom That she knows And when you walk into her eyes You won't believe The way she's always paying For a debt she never owes And a silent wind still blows Just for the 
Now, there's a power ballad, right, from Chicago, and hard to say, I'm sorry. It was this very week, uh, mid-September. Uh, let's take you back to 1982. That song shot straight to number one. And that great voice you hear singing lead is none other than Peter Cetera, who also wrote the song, and the producer was David Foster. Uh, good afternoon to you. Welcome as we kick off another edition of our number ones at one. I'm Eva D. Hope you had a lovely weekend. Our next set is coming up and we're going to start with two back-to-back hits from the 70s right after this. You get your sick kid's lottery ticket, 10 grand prizes, cars, travel, cash, including $1 million. I did, but I'm playing for the kids. I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Who needs luck? The sick kid's lottery has the best odds of winning. Still, it's really for the kids. So why are you clearing out this spot in your garage, hmm? Well, because if I do win my dream car, I gotta keep it somewhere, right? With one in two odds of winning, play for the kids or play for the prizes. Just as long as you play. Get your ticket at sickkidslottery.ca. The early bird deadline is this Friday. RAF 1311002. Please play responsibly. Has your financial advisor contacted you to ensure that your portfolio is still on track? Richard Enventino from Primetime Money is offering a second opinion service. You'll get a review of your personal financial goals and objectives, a customized investment plan for your current portfolio, estate strategies to help minimize tax, and best of all, it's complimentary with no obligation. Call Richard Inventino, 1-866-891-2637 and get your plan back on track. Coming up this week on Finding Your Bliss, life coach and bliss expert Judy Liebrecht is joined by documentary filmmaker Sean Menard to talk about his much-anticipated film, 299 Queen Street West. Also on the program is one of the stars of Much Music, original VJ Erica M. Follow us at The Bliss Minute on Instagram and Facebook. Visit our online magazine, findingyourbliss.com, and join us this Saturday at 1 p.m. on Zoomer Radio. Online at zoomerradio.ca. This is Zoomer Radio, the original greatest hits.
original greatest hits. Zoomer Radio. If you could read my mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. In a castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet You know that ghost is me And I will never be set free As long as I'm a ghost You can't see If I could read your mind, love what a tale your thoughts could tell Just like a paperback novel The kind the drugstore sells When you reach the part Where the heartaches come The hero would be me the heroes often fail And you won't read that book again Because the I'd walk away like a movie star who gets burned in a three way spray into number two. Play the scene of bringing all the good things out in me But for now, love, let's be real I never thought I could act this way And I've got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone and I just can't get it back If you could read my mind, love What a tale my thoughts could tell Just like an old time movie About a ghost from a wishing well In a castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet The story always ends if you read between the lines You'll know that I'm just trying to understand The feeling that you lack I never thought I could feel this way And I've got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone And I just can't get it back Classic song there, Gordon Lightfoot. If you could read my mind, 1971, the year for that one. And before that, uh, from the same year, Donny Osmond recorded his big hit, Go Away, Little Girl. Uh, that song was certainly a big deal uh, for all of his young fans, including moi. Yes, I think I had every Teen Beat magazine with Donny Osmond on the cover. I kept them for a whole lot of years. Actually, I think I just got rid of them last year. <laughs> Bringing back great memories, though. Um, I think I was Donny Osmond's biggest fan here in Canada. And yes, I'm still waiting for that phone call, Donnie. All righty. It is our number ones at one. Zuma Radio, a big good afternoon to you. I'm Eva D. Got a nice mix of music in our next set. We're going to kick things off with a pop rock band from right here in Toronto coming up.
Cottage Country becomes Elvis Country when Deerhurst Resort hosts Elvis and Company, the three-day Elvis festival like no other. Signature shows never performed at an Elvis festival. A meet and greet with former girlfriend Linda Thompson. Immerse yourself in the after parties, Memphis menus, and some of the world's leading Elvis tribute artists at Ontario's premier resort. Elvis and Company, October 27th to 29th. Weekend passes and single tickets now available at elvisandco.ca. I'm Marilyn Weston, and I give it to you straight from a woman's perspective here on Zoomer Radio every Saturday morning at 8. This Saturday, my team will share their knowledge and passions and happy stories so you can learn what works best for you and make informed decisions and take action with no regrets. So plan to tune in and join me, Marilyn Weston, and my team and get it straight from a woman's perspective this Saturday morning at 8 exclusively here on Zoomer Radio is big and so is air canada's worldwide sale with savings on over 180 destinations and up to 10,000 bonus airplan points to earn it's so big that every destination deserves a sales event for itself like the grand canyon blowout the niagara falling prices the playa del savings the colossal coliseum clearance and that's just to name a few get big savings and big bonus points with air canada but only until september 12 2023 look at aircanada.com or contact your travel agent a CARP Education Moment. Have you heard folks say that COVID is over? Well, it's not. Hello, I'm Bill Van Gorder, Chief Policy Officer at the Canadian Association of Retired Persons, CARP. The battle against COVID is far from over. While vaccines have provided significant protection, the virus continues to mutate, and the impending flu season means we must safeguard ourselves and our loved ones, particularly those 65 and over, from both COVID and influenza. The coexistence of COVID and the flu could strain the healthcare system and put vulnerable individuals at greater risk. Therefore, everyone, younger and older, should get a flu shot and a COVID booster to reduce the risk of co infections. Simple precautions that will help ensure the safety of elderly family members and our communities. For more, go to carp.ca slash protect. That's carp.ca slash protect. AM 740, Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. The silly face I'm going through And just because I call you up Don't get me wrong Don't think you got it made I'm not in love No, no It's because 
Zoomer Radio, the original greatest hits. Number one's at one. Nineteen ninety three was the year for that song. Mariah Carey and Dream Lover, as she was certainly on a roll at the time. That was her seventh number one song, and I'm sure she did a whole lot of celebrating. She was a very young, twenty three years old at the time, and we know from that point she went on to record many more number one songs, uh, a total of twelve more. But then again, who's counting, right? It is our number ones at One Zoomer Radio. I'm Eva D. On the way, we've got British rock band player with a song written after a bad breakup in the band. The legendary voice of the Moody Blues, Justin Hayward. The Harmony Tour, October 26th, the Avalon Theater at Fallsview Casino. Justin Hayward, featuring Mike Dawes. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster. Justin Hayward, live. 
a lot of people think that their auto insurance can be very confusing, very complex, and they, they let it roll over. But by doing so, you end up leaving potentially money on the table. Elliot Silverstein from CAA Insurance explains why a conversation today could save you money tomorrow. CAA offers a complimentary review whether you're a member or not. Talking to a broker or agent is really important because you may end up saving hundreds of dollars in the process. For Elliot, saving money is about tailoring your coverage for you. Bundling your insurance can save you a considerable amount of money. If you are entitled to discounts, whether it be winter tires or if you're part of a program, take advantage of those. And there's opportunities like CAA MyPace, which is Canada's first and only pay-as-you-go auto insurance program that allows you to pay per thousand kilometers as opposed to a traditional insurance plan. Don't buy insurance on autopilot. Visit carp.ca slash CAA to get your no-obligation quote. It is never a a bad time to look at your insurance. Visit carp.ca slash CAA. FM 96.7 in downtown Toronto. Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits. I lost that love before Got mad and closed the door But you said, child, just once more I chose you for the one Now we're having so much fun You treated me so kind I'm about to lose my mind You made me so very happy I'm so glad you Cause you came and you took control You touched my very soul You always showed me that Loving you is where it's at You made me so Very happy I'm so glad you
doing anything just to get you off of my mind. But when the morning comes, I'm right back where I started again. I'm trying to forget you. Greatest Hits, Super Radio.
Zuma Radio, the original greatest hits, uh, BTO, taking care of business. That's what we like to do around here. It's a hit and miss, obviously, but we do our best, all righty? It is 151, number one's at one. I'm Eva D. a ton of music to share with you this afternoon, so I hope you keep it right where it is. We've also got uh, details on the weather, all the latest news coming up with uh, Jeremy Logan. Stay tuned for that, 2 o'clock. Hi, I'm Jamie Buss, and I'm the publisher of The Tonic Magazine and host of The Tonic Talk Show and Podcast, sponsored by Pharmacy, powered by The Health Depot. Please join us this Saturday for a full hour of goodness. We'll discuss getting back into the fall swing of things. We'll learn why it's so hard for women over 40 to lose weight. We'll discover the benefits of supervised consumption sites for toxic drugs. And lastly, we'll find out how to efficiently self-advocate in the healthcare system. All in this week's episode of The Tonic, you know. Or what ails you? This Saturday at 11 a.m., heard exclusively exclusively on Zoomer Radio. Caregiving looks different to each and every person. If you're caring for a loved one who's experiencing bladder leakage, explore solutions to help them stay protected. Depend bladder leakage underwear for men and women are designed for all day protection. So you can get back to enjoying each moment together. Sign up today for your free trial kit of Depend products like Fresh Protection, Silhouette or Real Fit at Depend.ca, delivered discreetly right to your door. Depend, the only thing stronger than us is you. You get your sick kid's lottery ticket, 10 grand prizes, cars, travel, cash, including $1 million. I did, but I'm playing for the kids. I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky. Who needs luck? The sick kid's lottery has the best odds of winning. Still, it's really for the kids. So why are you clearing out this spot in your garage, hmm? Well, because if I do win my dream car, I gotta keep it somewhere, right? With one and two odds of winning, play for the kids or play for the prizes. Just as long as you play. Get your ticket at sickkidslottery.ca. The early bird deadline is this Friday. RAF 1311002. Please play responsibly. This is Zuma Radio Toronto. CFZM FM and CFZM AM. Owned and operated by MZ Media and Incorporated. Instead of a soothing touch, 
Good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Logan with your 2 o'clock Zoomer Radio News. A mix of sun and cloud for your Monday, chance of showers, high of 24. Right now it's 22 degrees Celsius in Toronto, 72 Fahrenheit, feeling more like 27. In the news, we begin abroad as the death and injury counts continue to rise as rescue crews dig out people both alive and dead in villages that were reduced to rubble following an historic earthquake in Morocco. The devastating 6.8 magnitude quake has now killed more than 2,400 people and injured over 2,400 more. Reporter M. Wynn 
with more. The epicenter high in the Atlas Mountains, just south of Marrakesh. Hundreds of first responders and aid workers, both local and international, helping clear debris and recover the dead. This father saying he and his family were at home when the earthquake hit. <laughs> but his eight-year-old son never made it out. At least 17 aftershocks, including a magnitude 4.5 tremor, further damaging buildings. Some residents spending a third night in the open, waiting for food, water, and electricity. M. Wynn reporting. A United Nations estimate says some 300,000 people were affected by Friday night's quake, made more dangerous by its relatively shallow depth. In Canada, residents with ties to Morocco are working to support one another. The owner of a Moroccan restaurant in Mississauga is donating the profits from this past weekend to help the victims. News back home, the federal government is giving Rogers Communication a deadline of October 3rd to open up its cellular network in the Toronto subway system to its competitors. Industry Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne says the deadline is part of new spectrum license conditions designed to bring cell phone and data services to the city's entire subway network by the end of 2026. This is a very, very big step. In the history of Canada, I'm told it's never been done, where you imagine and a carrier's license to operate with conditions. So for them to be able to sell cell phone services, they have to comply with what we said today. Uh, This is unprecedented, but I think it's needed. Currently, only Rogers and Freedom Mobile customers have access to the TTC network. Critics have called the lack of cell phone service on the TTC a serious security issue for years. Sheila Pisey Allen with Transit Advocacy Group TTC Riders telling CP24 the move is welcome. It's about being able to see what's going on. If there's a delay, it's about being able to tell someone I'm, I'm running late. So it's something that um, people really want to make it more convenient to take the TTC, but also um, feeling safer. That's what uh, we've been hearing a lot from transit riders. Minister Champagne is also giving Bell and TELUS until December 20th to reach commercial agreements with Rogers about financial terms or face penalization. The trial of two of the most prominent organizers of the 2022 Freedom Convoy protests picks up today. It's expected lawyers for the defense will try to block nine Ottawa residents and business representatives from taking the stand. Tamara Leach and Chris Barber are on trial for criminal charges related to their role in the demonstration, which blockaded Ottawa city streets for weeks early last year as protesters railed against COVID-19 public health measures. Meantime, in London, Ontario, arguments are underway today at the trial of a man facing terror-related murder charges in the deaths of four members of a Muslim family. The accused has pleaded not guilty to four counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder after allegedly steering his truck into the Afzal family while they were out for a walk on the evening of June 6, 2021. Lawyers for the Crown contend that the suspect was motivated by extremist right-wing views associated with white supremacy. Taking a look at the market numbers, the TSX up 131 points to 20,206. The Dow on the rise as well, 100 points to 34,677. NASDAQ also in the green, 143 points to 13,904. While the Canadian dollar was up fractionally to 73.7 cents U.S., oil down just a tenth of a penny to 87.50 U.S. a barrel. Zoomer Radio weather, a sun cloud mix for your Monday, chance of showers, a high of 24. Partly cloudy tonight, still chance of showers, a low of 16. Tomorrow, yeah, clouds and showers, risk of a storm, a high of 21. Right now it's 22 degrees Celsius in Toronto, 72 Fahrenheit, feeling like 27. I'm Jeremy Logan. News next at 3 o'clock on Zoomer Radio. Traffic reports, check. Original greatest hits, check. The Afternoon Express on Zoomer Radio ticks every box.
Pride of New Market, Ontario. Their Glass Tiger, their big hit from the 80s. Don't forget me when I'm gone. A big hello to you. 12 minutes after 2 o'clock. Good Monday afternoon to you. I'm Eva D. Liz West is off today. Um, we've got just a ton of music to share with you all afternoon. A little bit of information as well to make it extra fun. Um, and uh, by the way, did you have a nice weekend? I managed to catch the um, Tim Hortons Southside Shuffle. A lot of fun this year. Boy, every year it gets bigger and better, but it was really cool to head out there. It was actually Sunday. Good day. A lot of people out there taking in all the festivities out in Memorial Park in Port Credit. So, uh, you know, congratulations to another successful year to everyone involved with this year's Southside Shuffle. Alrighty, let's get you back to some music. We have got, we're going to take you to the 70s coming up very shortly with Billy Joel, who loves you just the way you are. Right now, the prices of created diamonds and the prices of natural diamonds are almost certainly the lowest that we will see in our lifetime. There are two factors that created the perfect storm in the worldwide price of diamonds. Number one, it was hard to meet new people during the COVID lockdown. When a person meets their soulmate, they usually get engaged about 20 months later. So when the lockdown ended, very few engagement rings were sold for the next 20 months. Extremely low sales of engagement rings created an oversupply of natural diamonds. So prices dropped lower and lower. Number two, when scientists perfected the process for creating diamonds, lots of companies sprang into business. And when the lockdown hit, all of those companies had to find some cash. So they began selling their diamond inventories for a lot less money than it took to create those diamonds. By the end of next spring, all diamond prices will likely be a lot higher. This is an incredibly good time to buy a diamond. Spence. Located in Vaughan, Scarborough, and Mississauga. This goes out to all the safe drivers. To the drivers who live in harmony with cyclists. The ones who leave so much space between other cars, they never have to read a bumper sticker. And those who drive slower in fog, snow, rain, and construction, which happen to be Canada's four seasons. With CAA insurance, your history of safe driving could get you savings on car insurance. Because you've earned it. If you're a safe driver, visit carp.ca slash CAA to learn more. Auto insurance is underwritten by CAA Insurance Company. If you want to party with the biggest artists of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it helps to know some of them personally. If you want to host the party, your name better be Robbie Lane. Zoomer Radio has your VIP pass to the original greatest hits from the greatest decades in music. Listen for Robbie Remembers, the 60s at 6, 70s at 7, 80s at 8, and the 9 o'clock mix. Party on with our own original greatest hit, Robbie Lane, weeknights on Zuma Radio. Don't go changing to try and please me. You never let me down before. You're too familiar And I don't see 